Hi there, this is Koshik Ranchod. Welcome to our weekly immigration show. Today's topic, I'm just so excited to share with you a success story, case study of a J1 exceptional hardship waiver with the case. Our client is from Latin America, got government funding. So you will want to stay tuned to learn the details, what the latest is with processing times and all of that. And if you haven't already smashed that like button, put your comments below and make sure you subscribe so you continue to get the latest and the greatest. So this is about a J-1 exceptional hardship where you have to demonstrate exceptional hardship either to your U.S. citizen spouse, lawful permanent resident spouse, or U.S. citizen child, lawful permanent resident child. Doesn't apply to parents for the J-1 exceptional hardship scenario. Additionally, in addition to that, let's look at the process. We simultaneously file an application with the Department of State, the 3035, then the I-612 application with USCIS along in our office. We file a very detailed legal brief because these cases are very difficult to get approved. So we like to know that we've done everything possible on our end to submit the best case possible. So we prepare a detailed legal brief with a lot of supporting documentation with the application. Then the case goes after USCIS sends it over to the Department of State, Department of State will review it and then sends it back to USCIS for final approval. So with that process, let's look at what the latest processing times and how this played out for our client. In this case, we're going back over a year where in July, 2021, we filed the case with the USCIS. So we're, it's about September right now. So this case took about a little bit over a year to get approved which is great that we're seeing processing times speed up a little bit, but it really varies and it depends. I would say anywhere from right now, a year to two, a little bit over two years, depending upon the case and the actual situation. USCIS received the case July, 2021. What happened after that? USCIS then sent the I-613 to the Department of State. This happened in September. So this only took a couple of months and you might be wondering, well, how did that happen? Why was it so fast? The reason is, is because we did a request to expedite with USCIS. We got that approved, was sent to Department of State. Then on October 19th, 2021, Department of State received the request from USCIS. Then it took the Department of State all the way until August 20. 22 to issue their favorable recommendation. So you can see here that the delay is with the Department of State. It's not with USCIS. Currently, we're still waiting actually for the final approval. So it hasn't actually been approved with USCIS, but once Department of State approves it or gives their favorable recommendation, in almost all cases, we see USCIS approve it. So we're expecting to receive the approval shortly. We'll keep you updated on that. So. The processing time that I mentioned earlier, about a year and a few months, that's with actually just Department of State. So it's going to be closer to about a year and a half to where we see the case actually get approved. You'll see that Department of State took a long time. As I mentioned earlier, USCIS, we were able to get that expedited. We also filed an expedited request with the Department of State, but we're finding that these expedite requests with the Department of State are not making a difference. They're still sitting on the case, taking a long time. I think they're just understaffed with COVID. They were not, they haven't been able to reduce the backlog significantly and they're the bottleneck. The case basically was stalled by the Department of State for over 10 months. We still beat the processing times that Department of State posted because they're posting 52 weeks. I can't take credit for that though because the Government processing times are what the government processing times are. So if times are faster, it may not be because of what we actually did. It's just whatever the government processing times are, unless there's an expedite situation. And if times are slower, it's also not because of what the law office did, unless there's like a request for evidence or a mistake was made. And even a request for evidence, you can have filed the best case possible and US CIS will issue a request for evidence. Those processing times are up to the government. And what I'm stating right now are just what's been posted right now, what we're seeing in our office, which is typically about one and a half to two, a little over two years, if you have government financing. Okay, we've discussed all of that. 
processing times, which I know many of you are interested in. We get that, those questions a lot because you have to plan your future. Now we're going to talk about how did we win the case? So as I mentioned earlier, uh, the J1 visa applicant was from a Latin American country, received government funds from their home country and qualified based off the fact that they have a U.S. citizen child. So here we really hit home on medical hardship because the child was receiving care from many medical care specialists. What often happens and what we like to demonstrate through our research and documentation is that the standard of care won't be the same in the home country as in the United States. Here, with medical hardship, we were able to make a very strong argument, but we didn't stop there. We also talked about country conditions. We like to bring up country conditions whenever we can. And so we brought up how this would be an issue as well for the U.S. citizen child. With the country conditions, we tied that into the medical hardship, developmental hardship. And with all of those arguments, we were able to get the case approved. So what's happening now, as you see, is that it gets frustrating with the Department of State stage. Sometimes we have to do multiple inquiries. Sometimes we even have to get the American Immigration Lawyers Association liaison involved because I am a member of the American Immigration Lawyers Association. We were still able to get it within the timeline expected, even beat the timeline with everything that we did in this case. And it was because we were on top of it, filed the expedite request that we were able to get an approval a little bit faster than expected. And now we're happy that our client, which is most important is, which is why we do what we do is unified with this family, won't have to go home for two years and have his whole life and his son's life disrupted. We all at the Rancho Law Group are very grateful to be serving you. I hope these videos are helpful to you. If you have any comments, questions, put them below. And I want to truly thank you for being amazing. Just by taking the time to better yourself, you're really showing that you are truly an amazing person going above and beyond what maybe someone else would do. And that's why many of our clients deserve to stay here because they are doing something that's so great for our country, which in turn betters our world. Thank you. Have a wonderful week and I will see you next week. Bye for now.